Today we're going to be doing the collected uh, countered walk. We're going to show you some of its simple forms and how we can progress with it and use it down the road. It's one of the best ways to ensure that you have a healthy horse that has a good back, uses its body correctly, and also light in the reins. Uh, the key is in this exercise, you can train your hands, you can train the horse to, to start understanding to go in self-carriage. You can do all of those things, all right? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you just a, a quick glimpse of what it could look like when, when, when the horse starts to understand it. And then we'll come back with a totally green horse uh, to show you how you start in a very simple form and, and not, not just showing the horse that already starts to understand and know how to use it. just a bit I can break it down whether I want his whether I want his head down to start off with it makes it easier to reach under with the hind legs at the start this is a good way to start uh, it'll be similar to the dime exercise or, uh, or the goat on the mountain exercise except that we teach the horse to move forward in in some form of collective frame all right so if I I'll start off I'll touch the ground that means that means that he should step under. That's a pretty big step. Then what I'm looking at is can my horse collect itself, raise the pole without moving backwards? steps forward with the front end I fix that and I, I always go back and fix it and every step we make is going to be from the hind end forward everybody is pulling on the horse's face and then driving them into it which is totally contradictory to any athletic movement we don't want to hold them back we want to have that ballet posture where they raise themselves and they get their hind end underneath we want to teach that so it becomes second nature to them. Some horses are more apt to go that way, some are not. But all horses can learn to do this better. All right, so we will come back with a totally green horse and a youngster. So we'll show you how simple you can start even with the younger horses. This is Chance. He's a yearling uh, Orlander colt. He's never done any type of exercise exactly like this. But I'm going to show you how, even as a youngster here, all, all I want to do at this stage is I don't want it necessarily a super collected frame. I don't want him to be totally light on hands, but if he, if he, he could end up that way. The big thing is I, I'm not, I don't want to overstructure it, but at the same time, I want to make sure that he understands uh, some basic skills and that he's open to the idea of being taught. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him to the rail nice and slowly. I'm not going to force him to the rail. If he's comfortable by the rail, that's good. The first thing I'm going to want him to do is to be comfortable driving from the hind end. Not with having his hind leg underneath at all, but with just understanding forward. So I'm not pulling on his face. Okay, I'm just, just saying that his, 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 his pole is above his withers. And I'm going to ask him forward just like that. All right, I want him to understand that. Uh, the endo tapping uh, video that I have out there is also a really great exercise for the juncture to start because he's got to then learn back up off of pressure. So I need to be able to, to, to move his feet around and then to posture him. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I will start slowly. Just checking to see if he'll follow my hand with a relaxed hand as we bring his head down. That's pretty good. That's not bad. All right, if I raise it up, does he come up? So the inclination is most of the time when we raise a horse's head up, they'll have a tendency to back up a bit. I, all I do is I stay steady. 
and I want him to be able to raise his pole like that, all right, and not and not feel he has to move his feet. I am not generating any energy going backwards at all. All right, so I'm going to ask him to bring his head down again, nice and slowly. Just a bit of a touch. The second he attempts to come down, I relax my hand so that there's no pressure. But see, my hand is still close in case I need to move his head anywhere else. So there's a release, but I don't totally, totally let him go so that if he decide he wanted to run, it takes me half the day to get him back again. So again, I'm going to try that again. I'm going to see if he understands moving forward. See how right underneath on that hamstring right there when I asked that? That was pretty good. I don't tap the feet for that because when I tap the feet, that is because I'm asking the feet to move. Okay, what I'm doing right now is I'm asking the whole horse to drive forward from behind in at the hamstring there. So now I'm going to ask him, I want his front feet relatively square. I'm going to just touch, tap the ground like that. That's his cue that I'm going to be asking him to step under. And see, when he lifts the foot, I stay on it. And if he puts it in front of the other one, I stop. And of course, now he's standing on my whip. I'll ask him again. Okay, that, was, that wasn't a bad start. So I'm going to just calmly raise him. He doesn't have to go very high. And then I'm going to ask for forward. Like that. No more than that. All right. I can rub him. He likes to get rubbed. I won't be introducing any treats with a young horse uh, because what I want them to do is I'd like them to be able to, to do this just out of uh, obedience to the lead horse. Okay, so he's going to gravitate to a leader and that's a lot stronger than treats and it's really important at this stage that he understand that he's going to be safe with the leader and not just because I'm, I'm a goody machine. All right, so again, I'm going to ask him to just relax his, his pole a little bit so that he comes down just a little bit with the head down. I might even want to speed it up a little bit with a little bit of tapping. You might even, there you go, and now he's relaxed. I want this relaxed so that it's easier for him to bring his hind legs underneath. If a horse raises the, the nose up like this, they tend to hollow the back a bit. And then it makes it harder to bring the hips under. So at first, I want to set the posture. I want to make it as easy as possible for him to get in, in an engaged position. So he's relaxed, I'm going to ask him again. I'll tap the ground. Again. So if he steps forward, I blocked him with my hand. So the second he stepped forward, I just blocked him. And then he went a step back. Again. Now I can feel him, he's a little high in my hand. So I'm going to gently ask him to bring his head down. There you go. And relax her. That's pretty good. That's a good start for a baby. So again, I'm slowly raising, slowly raising his pole. He stepped back. So again, I reboot. I start all over again. I relax his pole. Ask him to step under. Okay. And there's no rush. I, I don't go, oh geez, he's stepping under. Let's drive him forward. I don't want any, I don't want any kind of real excitement. I want him to be calm about this. Raise him slowly. Not that high. I'm going to ask forward. And see how I'm pushing it? My hand was still open on the halter. I am not pulling on the horse's face. I want to create drive in the horse from the hind end so they understand that when I use leg on this horse, that it comes from the hind end forward. I'm not pulling on their face. All right. I could practice a little bit of backup. Like slow and relax. Again. If I come up, I want to practice maybe a little bit higher pole without him moving. So this will be a little bit like a bozelle. My hand is right underneath the chin. I'll just give him just a little bump so he understands going high. High with the pole. And there, if he, if somebody had done a bit more endo tapping, this guy's done a little bit. See here when I tap with my hand, see how he relaxes pole? When he does that, that's the finish that everybody's lacking when they're trying to collect their horses. When the horse starts to relax his pole, that allows that whole top line to be in, 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 in a relaxed manner so that now they can engage the core maximally without losing the back. All right, so now I'm going to let him relax his pole just a little bit. 
And if he decides he's, he's okay leaving up there, I'm totally fine with that. I'll ask that leg. Again, I watch the feet. He went back, he's almost square, so that's not bad. That was pretty good. That was real good for a baby. I can just report that part of it. And if I repeat that, he'll get more and more comfortable bringing his hind legs underneath. I'll raise this up, ask him to come forward. See how I waited for him? I didn't walk off on him. I asked him, now if he didn't have any desire to want to move forward, I might give him a little slap. All right, yeah, he'll get anxious, he'll get excited, but the next time I push on him, he'll probably move. He hasn't needed it, okay? So I don't use it if I don't need it. I want him to be as calm as possible. I'd like it for this little guy here to think that this is not a bad idea. You know, if I decide that I want to ask his legs back, okay? If I want that leg forward. So those are all little things in this exercise that when I start controlling the feet, asking questions in a nice way, he's not going to be worried about me hanging, or hanging and touching him anywhere. The thing is, too, a lot of horses, if they have any potential uh, rudeness in them where they've never learned to accept any kind of touching on the hind end, you'll find they'll kick at the whip. If you get horses that kick at the whip, do not worry about it unless they're kicking at you. If they're kicking at the whip, let them kick the whip. It, there's nothing that'll come out of it. They'll kick it, they'll kick it, they'll kick it, and then they'll stop. Okay, so don't pick a fight. Now, if they, if they try to turn around and to kick you, then that means you should have sorted that out. You might want to practice a little bit of other skills in, that, in horsemanship so that, that they don't think it's okay to do that. But if in most cases, I can sort it out right here like this and not getting into, not getting into any kind of a battle. All right, so last time, I'm going to tap the ground. He's thinking. So I'm going to help him guess a little bit better. He was thinking to the forward. I just want to raise him up a bit more. Raise him up. He's just a little too low at his pole. Not bad. And that's a great start. Here's the finish again. So I stop and then I relax my hand. If I keep the horse's head under tension all the time, they will not be able to relax the pole and feel good about things. Uh, I won't be doing a jaw flexion with this little guy just yet, but I could put a bit in, and do the same thing. I could actually, I could actually use my fingers, one finger on the side of each side of his mouth, and there you go. He's licking right there, licking. That's going to soften his pole. Okay, and if I do that, and then I release and just let my hands, my hands just hang down, relax. Look what happens. He starts to come down. And he starts to relax his pole. This is great preparation for the bid. I don't have problems bidding horses because they, they, don't, they don't see me coming to play in their mouth as a negative thing. It's actually a pleasant thing. So what he's doing right now, he's kind of licking, licking the, the, uh, as if he's trying to lick some sugar. And that's what I'd like him to do. And just relax and stop. So that's enough for this little guy. If I was to do this five minutes, uh, three, four times in a week, you would be amazed to see what you have at the end of a month. I mean, he'll do stuff that most grown horses can't do. So we'll come back with a horse that has a little bit more schooling so you can see how it sets up. Uh, but some of these horses have a bit more schooling, but they're also, uh, they, they tend to be a little bit more anxious. So that gives you a little bit better idea of what you might be looking at if you're trying it for yourself. This is Danza. Uh, she's had two five minute sessions doing this this exercise so uh, yes she's had some endo tapping going down the rail so she does have that that understanding the forward thing and and uh, moving back with, with different parts uh, raising her pole she has had jaw flexions to help her relax all right so she's at a stage already she's very comfortable being fairly upright so I'm not necessarily going to ask her head to be that low at the start but I, w I won't be so worried that it's way up where she's very comfortable uh, because I want to make sure that the top line stays as relaxed as possible when I ask for engagement of the hind underneath. So I'm going to just tap the ground.
I'm waiting for her. I need it to more forward. rush it. I want her to stay calm. And the tendency is, and especially her, she, 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 she's so, she's so busy that if I don't calm in between the different pieces, she'll start to fire off driving forward before you're even ready. So now I want to calmly raise her up. So when I raise her up, I'm raising, I'm doing this, when I'm doing this exercise, I'll just stand on the side, but I want to show you what direction this raises up. I'm stretching the lips. And she should come right up high with her pole without stepping back. I'm creating a bit of a jaw flexion at the same time. So to create the jaw flexion, I just hang on to one ring of the bit and the other one just stretches just to say I'm putting a wrinkle on the lip and then it relax. A little bit of a wrinkle on the lip and then relax. Then I relax both hands, but I don't allow her to go really low with her pole. I want that pole to stay above that wither. I'd like it if she's relaxed at the pole because I'd like her to drive forward with a relaxed pole. So in this stage here, now I'm going to ask her, so when I asked her to step under, it was right at the lower leg. When I've asked her to step forward, it's on the hamstring. Here, and I'm asking again, forward, here. Now, when I'm doing this, see this hand is free. She shouldn't be pressing on the hand. If she presses and pushes in the hand, I will raise up towards her ear like this, and then I will move her back. I teach her not to rest in my hand. I want her to go into self-collection, which I'll show you again later on with, with easy and how once that horse understands where to hold itself, it holds itself there. And if you look at uh, on her sales video, there's actually a, a video of me riding her and you'll see the reins when she's riding are like this. She's just carrying herself in a collected frame by herself. If she can do it, I don't want to do it for her. All right. The whole idea is I'd like the horse to not just uh, have us use the word self-collection, but to actually know what it means and to actually do it and get the opportunity to carry it. So here again, I'm gonna just relax a bit in my, in my rain hand. I'm going to ask her to step under a little bit. I'm still waiting for her because if she steps under by herself, she, she didn't step far enough under, so then I will touch it because I do want the step to be further. I'll stay with it. Good. And again, don't rush it. Right? Now the reason why I have a set of reins on her, if she was to twist her pole, I would actually just shorten this rein here right behind the ear, and I'd have it in my hand like this. I'm still doing a jaw flexion with my finger here, just stretching it so she can relax there. And that's not bad right there. And she has to take the handle here and get her to relax there like that. That's not to apply themselves quite well if you don't rush them. If you make that horse anxious, it, it, it ends up being a wrestling match. And I don't want to have a wrestling match with the dead. I should be able to handle that delicately. She's not bad there. She's fairly relaxed at the pole even. The pole's fairly high. Now I can ask for my forward. Okay, and I wait there. She's a little heavy, so I back her up. So she pushed in my hand. I don't want her pushing in the hand. She should give. When she feels the bit, she should round. She should not rest in it. So again, I just relax. Good. I ask her to step under. And I'll actually use the word under. I'll back. 
back this up. That's too busy. Ask it forward. Oh, right there. It's good. So this leg is, is fairly far underneath. I don't need that big of a step with this leg to be underneath. I wait. That's not bad. Again, she doesn't have a whole lot of experience. I don't want to make it really hard for her to succeed. I'm going to ask for my forward. So I gave her a little tap there because she lingered a little bit too long with that leg. I'll set it up again. Nice and relaxed. I'm going to ask her to step under. That's a nice step. So I want to reward that. So I take all the pressure off. And ask her again with the other step. By keeping the whip against the leg, I'm kind of blocking her stepping back. There we go. That's a nice step. I'm going to take my time getting her a little higher. A little higher. Oh, that's it. No, gee. I tapped a little high, that was my fault, because I wanted her to step under correctly. I just relax. I'm going to ask for my four. And that's all we need to do at the start. Finish it. See how my hand just relax? When I relax my hands when I'm riding that horse, that horse should come down. When I raise, that horse should raise. Okay? We're not pulling on that horse. We're never pulling back. If we want the horse to bend, we open. If we want the horse to raise, we do this. If we want to, if we want to stop, we raise and sit. We don't pull back. All right, we're going to bring another so horse and see what it's like with a horse that's got a little bit more schooling. This is Amata. Amata's done actually a camp uh, last month with a gal from uh, Manitoba and she really hadn't done this exercise so this is all due to Jen and she did a great job. Uh, I'm just going to show you what she what she was able to accomplish. Uh, what made it a little bit more difficult challenge with this horse is that this horse uh, unusually found her from the, the hind feet a, a, a while back and she's getting way sounder, doing way better and of course her being unsound on the hind feet put all the weight on the forehand so her way of protecting herself was moving on the forehand so she's learned to totally change her balance again of course being an Andalusian it's pretty easy for her to to be upright but it when you when you've been on your forehand for a few years it's a bit of practice to learn to do it so again I'm gonna ask her she's relaxed in my hand right now I'm not really asking her frame very high but she's already thinking, as soon as she sees that whip there, she's thinking I should maybe step under. I'm watching the front feet squared up, that's pretty good. And again, I'll just a gentle touch. That's pretty good. That's a good, that's a good place to start from. All right, now what I'm looking at, I'll slide this rein here over top. I want her to raise a little higher, but I'm also going to want to have her soften her pole. So I'm going to raise the pole a little higher. I'm stepping back so you can see it. But as I'm doing that, you can see her chewing because I'm just stretching her lip a little bit. Not much, just one ring, but not enough for her to move in reverse. That's not a bad place here to start. I'm going to see if I can just get her to relax her pole here. When I say relax her pole, her head will start to hang more vertically. When it hangs this way, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be under tension. It shouldn't be stuck like that. It should be just hanging like that. So I can tap her. If she's had a little bit of endo tapping. That's not bad. You can see right there, the eye soften. And I'm going to ask her forward. That was a great step forward. All right, I'll switch her around. as high at the pole as she can. I'm going to get to that later, but I don't want her pushing in my hand. And I'm doing 
doing a bit of a jaw flexion, so there you go. She's relaxing my hand right now. I'll ask her to step under. That's not bad. That's a start. She's already thinking of the second second leg, but I want to give her a bit of time to think about that, so I reward her to give me a good try. I slap the ground again. I might reach across and give her a little tap and say I need it forward. That was really good. Raise her slowly. Later on, I'll show you with easy. I'll raise, I'll raise the horse high enough so you'll see some muscle twitches on the hind end. So I'm, I'm going to start doing a little bit of a squat. She's not quite ready to do that, so I want to make sure she has a little bit more confidence and she's light. Again, I'm raising her a little slowly as I'm doing this. I want her pull raised, and she's starting to chew right now with her mouth there. Nice and relaxed. When I, when I want the horse to raise the pole, I raise with both rings going up. The horse shouldn't get heavy on that. When I stretch the lips, that's so little pressure, the horse won't be thinking to raise the head, they'll be thinking I just lick and relax my mouth. We want to relax the mouth because that's where you get the TMJ joint to relax and that's what's gonna allow that horse to soften its pole even quicker. That's just a little heavy, so I gave her just a little bump up towards the ear. That's pretty good. And we ask her forward. And again, that was just a little heavy, so I give a little bump up by the ear. Okay, and then I want to finish it. So I'm just slowly relaxing my left hand. I'm not pulling down, I'm just relaxing it. And she should join me all the way down. So I don't, I don't, I don't have to nurse the horse into a down and low. Anytime I do a raised pole with a jaw flexion in that. When I relax, the horse will start to join with that. So when I raise up, they'll come up. When I relax, they'll come down, all right? She practices long and low all day in the field, so I don't think she needs to practice tons of it. But it's nice to have it on cue. So again, we'll last try. I'm gonna ask her underneath. She's already, she already stayed set up underneath anticipating the next one. And again, now that's closer than what she was before. I'll ask just a little bit more of a step with the other one. That's pretty good. Slowly, I'm going to ask her to raise her pole. And see, I don't know if you can see it from that angle. She's just twisting the pole. So that's where I'm going to use that rein going over the ear to keep her head nice and straight. I don't want a twisted pole. I'm going to ask a jaw flexion. I'm raising it slowly so that she raises her pole and now she's starting to relax her mouth. That means that the pole, this will start to relax soon. And again, and again, a jaw flexion. And again, and I can even tap her a little bit here, which will relax that. All right, calmly prepare. So again, there's a little bit of pushing there, so I, I bump her back to make sure. If I wanted to reverse that, all I do is I have her set up over here, and I would push here. There's no pushing on the bit. I just add my energy going back. Okay, to set up and to get an even better backup, I could ask here underneath. All right, and the pole's raised. And then I'm going to ask her to back up. We're reversing it. By having her hind legs underneath, she'll be able to move herself backwards and have next to nothing for difficulty, but she shouldn't weigh anything in my hand. And again, the finish. Let her relax. If she pushes into my hand, I'll close, my hand will close on the ring of the bed and stop that. She never takes the reins. She accepts the range, she doesn't take it. And that's pretty good for her. So we'll come back to easy. So we're gonna come back and uh, brought easy back again so you can see what it looks like when it's a little bit more advanced with, with the horse. And uh, if all you do is teach this first part here to your horse, you're gonna, you're gonna have benefited from the exercise. You don't need to get into any high school, but these exercises all lead into high school exercises as well. 
So that's why it's a, it's a really important thing that that uh, uh, a lot of people say. Well, I don't really care if my horse does piaf. The only thing is, is that a lot of people don't realize if I want to strengthen if I want to strengthen the hip and back on this horse and his hindquarters, the piaf is one of the absolute best exercises to do that. And a horse has to carry itself well to do it when they're doing it correctly. All right. And then if you, you know, somebody says, well, I'd like to do passage. Well, Piaf is a, is, is a lead up to passage. Some horses will do one versus the other a little bit more naturally. Um, he's a little concerned on the passage. So we're going to go to just the basic exercise. Again, at the start, he's fairly comfortable, fairly high up, so I don't take him really low. I'll ask his feet to come in. There we go. And if I stayed there with, with that whip with him, he'd step right underneath. Again, I make sure he's raised at the pole, the wither should raise. I'm just relaxing right now, it feels just a little tense. I'm gonna do a jaw flexion. And there we go. There we go. And I'm gonna ask him to step forward. Okay, it's this, ask us underneath. Good. Hang on. Hang on. Relax. Now we're going to move it backwards. Good. And finish it. I looked at his feet right away. He's stepping underneath. He's going to he's going to do the dime. That's why I call it the dime. He's literally going to go into a rabbit stance. Unfortunately, pushing from that area is very difficult. But what I might want to do later on, I was telling you that with the back, she sits there, I can raise that horse, with a slight bend here, put my hand just gently on the shoulder here with bend, and I'm going to watch the muscle twitches on his hind end. I'm just going to move him back. He's sitting on the table, doing a little bit of a squat. I want him to sit a little bit. Sit a little deeper so he actually does a strength exercise. There we go. Again, I want to raise him and move him just slightly back. So I want him underneath. So he was thinking, I was asking a bit of a reverse. I don't say back up because he has the cue. Again, slowly ask him to just sit there a little bit like that. You just saw it quiver there like that. Good. 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 And again, I want him to relax his pole here and drive forward. You saw the strong contraction there driving forward. That was really quite good. Move him back. And he should not be heavy in my hand. So right there, he was getting a little strung out. He was he was backing up with his hind end way too far behind him. I wanted to stay underneath a bit better. That's one of the problems. When you back up a horse too fast, they take too big of a step, and then the hind legs get so far behind they're putting on the brakes. If you're dropping the wither, then now they're having to drag the front end. All right, so I'm gonna ask him here, here. So I was telling you earlier that the lower leg is used to get underneath. But also the horse is connecting to lifting the feet. See like that. So right there I'm going to stop. That was a start. He was a little heavy in my hand. So I'm going to back him up and I'm going to tell him I don't want him resting in my hand. A little bit further. And relax it again. Under. getting just a little bit anxious. I don't mind giving me a little bit of a treat for that. Something in for him. Because I ask this guy a lot of tough questions. He helps me with a lot of horses. He gets a lot of dirty jobs. So I'd like him to think that just because I ask him all these tough things that there's going to be something in it for him. He was getting strung out there. Again, I want the quality in the backup. Back. Back. Good. Good. 
under. Back. Back. Under. No, over. 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 you can use it to collect them and then with this guy I like to when I ask him to do some of this stuff I also like him to have some fun so what I'll do that's fun for him is when I turn him loose after a really structured exercise like that he loves it when he gets to just take off and, and run so I'm going to send him off so he goes and 